Hey, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, celebrations take place all around the city to honor African American history and plans are approved for a new hotel in the medical district downtown. Here to discuss these topics and a whole lot more is the councilman who represents Ward 5. You know who it is, Mr. Cedric Creer. Welcome back. How are you? Got fantastic. How about yourself? <laughs> and we're, uh, man, we are getting way into 2022 all of a sudden. It's hard here. to believe that we, look, we're basically in March and yep. first quarter of 2022 is almost right. over. Can you believe it? So much has happened between <laughs> January to now. Exactly. Um, coming out of COVID, numbers are coming down. Thank the goodness. mask mandate is, yeah, has been rescinded. Um, you know, I think there's some formality of getting back to normality. Yeah. And I think people are really happy about that, but we still need to be safe yeah, and be, safe. Still be cautious. Be smart. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, COVID is still there. Uh, but no doubt about it, people are just, I think we leave after two years. Yeah. Ready know. to be. Remember when, the, remember when it came down, they closed the city yeah. and, and other state, and we were like, oh, just a week. Yeah. I'll go by, and then we'll be yeah. back in the swing of things. Yeah, a couple weeks. A couple weeks, city, right. Yeah. And and two, a couple weeks turned into two, two years. years. Yeah, here we are. Here exactly. we are. Here well, we are. Councilman, so true. And one of the things that changed since you've been on the show uh, last time around, or at least since the, the end of last year of 2021, the ward maps were redrawn. Yes. So we're going to show everybody, we, we've talked about this previously, but just to remind you that the ward maps have changed. Now, these are the old maps prior to December of 2021, but you'll notice that Ward 5 is going to morph here a little bit. You'll see the boundaries are going to shift more to the north and to the, to the west. And Councilman, explain, that's currently Ward 5. Yep. Explain why we did that. Well, the census comes out every 10 years, and we try to do our best to balance out each district. Um, give it, we have a little bit more than 600, 700,000 people in the area. And so we try to balance it out and also try to balance it out from a ethnicity standpoint mm -hmm. as well. And so um, each ward gets tweaked a little bit every 10 years. But, you know, end of the day, we still represent the city of Las Vegas. Yeah. And I've, I've gotten more uh, constituents now. We've gotten some new calls for some people that are like, okay, yeah. you're my council yeah, person. Yeah. And then I got some calls people say, oh, you're not my council person anymore. I miss uh, you. Yeah, I miss you. <laughs> yeah. So that's always good to hear. But uh, many of them are in good hands in my ward. Uh, Councilman Anthony got a little something. I uh -huh. took a little bit of his. Councilman Knutson in Ward 1. And then Councilwoman Diaz took a little bit. So yeah. we, we manage. The, the idea is the, the idea is the councilman says so that uh, each of the council members represent about the same number yeah. of, of constituents within their ward. Yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. We try to make it as fair as yeah, possible. Exactly. There's a, there's a lot of give and take. I hate I hated giving up some areas, uh, but I'm very happy to take on a couple of areas yep. too. Yep. So. I want to tell everybody out there if your ward changed, if your address changed wards, uh, you would have gotten a card in the mail, a little a postcard basically saying it had changed, and that uh, if you wanted to go on the city's website, you could do that and uh, put your address in to tell you your new ward. And you can subscribe to your new council members. Uh, email you can. Or you can always call our office, 702-229-5443, and we'll be happy to uh, let you know what's going on. Exactly, exactly right. So, well, we are in uh, Black History Month. It's going on right now and uh, happening, been busy. And uh, you've been, and you've been all over the place. Uh, I want to talk about this first and foremost. Your dad was honored yeah. uh, at the Springs Preserve uh, as part of uh, Black History Month uh, this time around. Very special. Tell us about uh, that. You know, the Springs Preserve hosts a Black History event uh, every year, and mm -hmm. it's gotten more and more crowded every single year. Uh, they honor some individuals. Uh, this year had a health and wellness uh, theme to it, and they graciously nominated my father to be a recipient of an award this year honoring him as being the second black doctor in the state of Nevada mm -hmm. and all the work he did within the community and uh, I was I was I was overwhelmed and humbled to receive it we had a ceremony where all the congressional delegation our two senators and our three congresspersons Big deal. from uh, southern Nevada all gave proclamations to my father and I was there to, re to receive those then we had another celebration at three o'clock with a larger group at the event uh, my family came out. Yeah. And That's was, your brother. Yeah, my brother yeah, on, the, yeah. on the on the on the right, uh, Lou Collins, who was MC. My daughter, uh, Kennedy, who was there, and uh, my Those uncle. Persons. Yeah, my uncle Rudy was there. Friends mm -hmm. and family. It was just really, really nice. And I gotta hit, tell you, it hit it hit home a little bit. Sure. I wasn't expecting it's a big honor for your father. Yeah, you know, and I'm usually the p person giving out the proclamations, and instead of receiving them. Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking that, well, it's just kind of one more thing we've got to do today, 3 o'clock, okay, 11. But it got there, and it was very, very humbling. Well, I think very you, gracious 
of the Springs as well as our congressional delegation. Yeah. And you had mentioned to me how many people remembered your dad yeah. as their doctor and, and how important he was to, to the community. It was. Uh, you know, we posted something on social media and got a lot of you know, many, many, many positive responses at the event. Um, a lot of people in the audience were, you know, commenting afterwards. How uh, my father was their doctor, or my father delivered them, mm -hmm. or my father helped them, or he was my parents' doctor. And he, you know, I, I say this: uh, family practitioners, uh, general practitioners back then were true family doctors. Yeah, they did everything. Yeah, they did yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. They were true country doctors where you did house calls, you had a bag at the house. Yep. People come people to your knock, house. Yeah, they yeah. knock on the door and they would say, is Dr. Career here? And he'd come out and talk to them. And, um, you know, he always, if you if you had a couple of dollars to pay, then great, put it towards. If you didn't, then, yeah. you know, we'll catch you next time. And I, I tell you, I learned a lot from that. If I'm working in his office and seeing the patients and seeing the community around that supported him and he supported them, um, it, was, it was a very great experience to be a part of. And I'm blessed for it. I'm a much, much, much better person from watching my father and my parents in the community and how they operated and kind of turns me into who I am today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very much the, the legacy he left. And, uh, of course, your father has passed. My parents have also passed. Mm -hmm. And so those tributes uh, mean even more. They do. They do. And I, it's, just, it's just humbling. Um, I, I, I tell you, I learned more about my father after his death from his patients yep. and friends that said, oh, your father did this, or your father, oh, did you know your father did this? Um, you know, he, he helped pay for, for everything from some kids' tuitions. Mm -hmm. How do you want to be? And they came up to me and said, you know, your father and a couple other people helped pay my tuition when I was at school. I never knew this, yeah. hey, you know, Seems things like so. that. I'm at the gas station pumping gas. Somebody comes up and says, you know, your father is pretty, pretty cool. He made a lasting impact in our community, yeah. I can tell you that. Surely, and that's why he was honored, so yes. very good. And then, Councilman, it didn't stop there. Uh, the Springs Preserve, there was a panel on uh, the historic west side. You were a member of the panel. Yeah. Discussing, uh, tell us, what, 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 was, the, what was, was the topic? It was so much fun. It was at the Nevada State Museum, mm -hmm. and they hosted a panel discussion about the historic west side and more about the social issues. And um, it was myself, uh, uh, four other individuals, and we just had a great conversation Clay T. White was the MC about what the historic West Side was about, uh, some of the social aspects. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and I mentioned of how it was community and how I knew so many people. Which you've always told me, um, yeah. You know, the people who were inaugurated into Legacy Park. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew them. They were yep. personal family friends, and and how when you needed something in the community, you you called so and so. When mm -hmm. uh, my and my father, anything that went on in my house. <laughs> Car breakdown, plumbing, uh, electrical, something. It was somebody from the community that came over and took care of and it. helped yep. uh, fix it. And, yep. and so that's how I grew up in the community. You know, getting my hair cut at Dixon's Barbershop on Jackson, <laughs> and Charles Keller teaching me how to swim, and uh, it just the list goes on. Yep. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and I'm sure the, the audience really enjoyed uh, hearing those those stories too, and, and it gives you so much perspective yeah. of, of what it was like before today. No you doubt, know? I'm so. I'm unique where I'm old enough where I remember a lot of those <laughs> things, but I'm still young enough where yeah. uh, I'm still sort of planting our own seeds as well. Exactly, right? And, Perfect and, age. Yeah, <laughs> and so I'm kind of right in the right in the middle there, and and the more I realize about what took place, you know, I was born in 1969. What happened in the 60s and 55 wasn't, I mean, I was right, a, a product, mm. a direct product of all of the work, that, sacrifices people put in in the 50s and the 60s. And here I come along, sort of the first generation, a part of yeah. receiving the benefits of that work that they did. And then, Councilman, that's a perfect segue to our next video. Uh, there's a black firefighters display at the Doolittle Senior yeah. Center. Same thing. Uh, I think people are well aware that for years uh, the fire departments here in the valley were segregated. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, there were no African Americans on the fire department, and that changed. And this is a tribute to those trailblazers who were allowed to become firefighters and make a contribution to their community. No doubt. And uh, thank you to former Councilwoman uh, Brenda Williams for putting this on and putting together and working with the current fire uh, safety department to honor these individuals and you can see some of the first uh, black female firefighters. Uh, Monroe Williams is Brenda Williams' husband who mm -hmm. was the first black firefighter and it's really hard to comprehend the fact that this was not that long ago. No, it really wasn't. And that's what always 
catches me, uh, the first black fire chief was uh, Chief Washington, mm -hmm. Dave Washington for the city of Las Vegas. He was the fire chief after I came to the city. I've yeah. been to the city uh, over 20 years, but when I came here, David uh, was not yet fire chief. There you yet, go. So. Yeah. Yeah, and then you have, you know, we have a number of assistant chiefs, and, and but then some people have retired. So we're in the process, and I've been working with our fire safety team to try to find better ways and more innovative ways to recruit minorities to, into fire safety. And, and, and this is a great um, uh, memorial for those individuals. And, 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 the, and the cool thing, some of them are still living. Yeah, they sure are. And still around to tell great stories. and. Um, we need to tell those stories. Exactly. And as you said, Councilman, I think it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't um, that long ago, which so, is very, very hard to believe. It, exactly. Uh, and it, 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 it just lets you know that although we've come a long ways, we have a, a, a long way right. to go as well. We're making progress? Oh, yeah, I think yeah, we're yeah. making progress. So yeah, so no doubt about it. And I think that, um, especially within the city of Las Vegas, um, I, I, the city, we have a very, very diversified city. Yep, and we we have a Latino who is the city manager. We have, um, you know, Dr. Lisa Morris Hibbler, who is the chief mm -hmm. of community services, who's African American woman, and, and so many others. Um, and I and I believe that the people, the the great thing is, is that they're the most qualified people for those positions. Exactly. And they prove it every single day about their intelligence and their hard work and their work ethic. And so it's great to to see them in those positions and yep. prosper. But when you know them, that's that's yep. that's what they would do. Exactly. Yeah. They're, Whatever they're, the color you're scared of, nationality, yep. uh, they are excellent at what they do, and it's great to see that. Though in the city, um, it, my peers, mayor included, um, don't see it that way, and they see opportunities. And if you're the most, if you're qualified, you're going to do it. Then great. Exactly. Exactly. Councilman, one more thing we want to talk about, uh, our art gallery here at the city, uh, at City Hall. This is great because we can finally open this up to the public. During the pandemic, you, you couldn't really come in yeah. and see this. The idea is that uh, it was there for the public. Of course, now it is open to the public. Those are, th there's your dad there on the yeah, left, on the in left. fact. Uh, guy, on the left is my father, on the right is Reverend Marion Bennett, who baptized me wow. at Zion Methodist Church. Uh, th what a great uh, gallery uh, is beautiful uh, portraits as well as the paintings of the 36 individuals who were inducted into the historic west side legacy exactly. park exactly they the artist did an amazing job of recreating off of pictures that he see that, uh -huh. that the person saw and recreating those those portraits i gotta tell you that amazing 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 job and of course this uh, gallery was this was celebrating uh, black history month so Yep, come on down. Yeah. It's on the second floor. Yep. yep. It is, it'll be up until the end of the month, yep. I believe. And so uh, just tell the marshals on front you want to go see the gallery yep. and they'll let you right up. Yeah, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's right there. It's, uh, and it, it's, uh, it, it's beautiful artwork and of course it, it rotates. There'll be other displays there in the future as well. So it's, it's, that's the idea is to let people see the art. So, and then Councilman, I love this too. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said each year we honor citizens who've made outstanding civic accomplishments and significant contributions to the Las Vegas community. Community. Congratulations to the 2022 African American Trailblazers Service Awardees. Look yeah. at these folks. How about a great event that the city hosts uh, every year and they honor individuals in the community who have done outstanding uh, things that have, that have been benefited our community. And then we also announced at that event, the 22 individuals are going to be inducted into the historic West Side Legacy Park this year. Uh -huh. And then we'll have a celebration around June, Juneteenth. So, you know, many times people in our community, their work goes unsung. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just go out there every day. They do the work. They help individuals not looking for recognition. They just do the work of the people and of the community. And so this is fantastic because we're taking a moment in time we're stopping and recognizing that great work. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and uh, at, at a very fitting time of the year. Mm -hmm. And Councilman, uh, I, I love creating that legacy. You mentioned a historic uh, West Side Legacy Park. This was really impressive. There was a, a West Prep, the West Prep Academy had a field trip. Folks, look at the number of kids. You're gonna see this in a second. Look at the number of kids yeah. that came out to the park that day. That's amazing. And how about this was on a Saturday they did this field trip yeah, and all the kids that's, that's came right, exactly. out. It's the third, fourth, and fifth grade classes of Charles West 
uh, elementary school. Charles S. was the first black doctor in the state of Nevada. And they came out in order to see the park, uh, look at the plaques that we have, which you see right there, honoring individuals. Charles West is one of those individuals. Mm -hmm. So how about the namesake of their school? Yeah. They come out and learn more about Charles West and then others who were in the community did so much. What a great day. It was a beautiful day. Uh, we bought them lunch. They were very happy that parents stuck around uh, for it. Pastor Kelsey West, who I have to thank of Nehemiah Ministries, was also there yep. to uh, talk to the kids. And, and we talked about our upbringings and uh, they broke all those kids up into different groups and we rotated in. Uh, they asked us questions. Uh, you know, the kids' questions were, were great. Like, what's your favorite color? <laughs> Do you have a dog? Uh, but then uh, how did you get to be a in your council. position, city yeah. council person, how did you do, where are you from? Just great questions mm -hmm. and engagement. And the kids had so much fun. It reiterates exactly what that park is it, supposed well, to exactly. be. I was just gonna say why it's there in the first place. Yeah. Completely and totally reiterates it. When you see those kids that are there, I remember I was on a board of the Smith Center for the Performing Arts mm -hmm. and prior to opening, one of their goals was to have school buses wrapped around the building, yeah. the yellow buses, because that meant that uh, kids were inside learning and same thing with the park and this is a great example of that I got to thank the teachers in administration Charles West for putting it together and we're gonna do it hopefully you know do it next year make it bigger and better every sounds every good year. the the purpose of the park is that uh, the inductees the first class people that made a contribution to the community uh, a, a significant accomplishment but the interesting thing is that each year other people will be added. They are, yeah. and it's amazing that once that first cohort of people came out, those names came out, so many people were like, well, hold on. Yeah, what about, what, what about, about yeah. what about, what <laughs> yeah. about, what about? And uh, which is great. And the cool thing about it is that we want to find people that maybe we don't know, Yeah. right? We There are certain individuals that are, I would say household names that we've worked with throughout the course of Bob Bailey um, over the course of years. Uh, but there's some people in that park that, you know, I hadn't heard yeah. of as well. And that's another aspect of it is to is to honor those unsung heroes that did so much yeah. that maybe we didn't. Everybody we knew Mr. Know. Bailey. Uh, our, our family did too. Uh, his uh, grandson and my daughter. Um, we're, we're pals. Is that right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, a few birthday parties. Yeah, and, uh, great, 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 great yeah. family. Yeah. Uh, Anna Bailey is still uh -huh. with us, his wife, uh -huh. who is an absolute wonderful, classy uh, a person who is who is uh, still just a matriarch of our community. Yeah. And uh, his, his son and daughter are still yeah, engaged John, in our community. John's John friend of ours and uh, yeah. his wife, Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great, great, great people. Uh, not going to find her. Uh, finer group of individuals yep. in Couldn't the agree Bailey more. family. And, the, and the, the Goins as well. Uh, yeah, 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 the yeah. Goins is, yeah. yeah. You know, look, we could talk, I we know, could have exactly. a whole show <laughs> just <laughs> talking about the people yeah. who are in this park and everybody has some story or it, some relation true. along the way. And if you've been in Las Vegas any time at all, yeah. you're probably gonna know uh, several of these folks as yeah, well. No so, doubt about it. Um, uh, it's just, and I remember when John and Terry, uh, got married, right? And it was just great. And Terry was a newscaster was. for a while. Yep. And, uh, you were from back in the day when we worked in Texas. Uh -huh. uh, it, oh, is that right? A competing station, small world. Oh, get out of here! I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that. Exactly. Sure. And, uh, sure. 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 She and my wife were friends, and uh, we moved here, and this is her hometown. Mm -hmm. And uh, lo and behold, we end up here. And um, what a nice woman! Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Very, 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 very pleasant woman. And, and John's just a great guy yeah. too. You know, you never catch him without a smile on his exactly. face. Exactly. Good lawyer too. Yes, so. he is. And then, Councilman, hey, the, the hits keep rolling here. The uh, MLK Parade, you posted this on Facebook. He said, what a great day celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the 40th MLK Parade. What a great day. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, we, we were in the group. Uh, the mayor was there in front of me. I ended up walking. There goes the mayor. And then uh, Mayor Pro Tip Anthony, former Mayor Goodman, uh, and those are my fraternity brothers, which is special for us of Alpha Phi Alpha because of the fact that um, Dr. Martha King was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha. And that's, it, that's, that's Chinese, Chinese New Year. I was yeah. gonna say, we, yeah. it's, it's Chinese yeah. New Year parade, Lunar yeah. New Year parade. Uh, parades, so you, parades, you, you, back to back. Gotta do parades, you know, <laughs> we love them downtown. I, I got my steps in those days. You, you did, you did. <laughs> so uh, it, it, you can't forget that. We, had, we also celebrated that downtown. And then Councilman, uh, this is really a big deal. Um, we're gonna switch gears here a little bit. 
the um, ARPA funds, the American yes. Rescue Plan. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. The Las Vegas City Council approved an agreement with UNLV for a new hotel, parking garage, and medical office building near Shadow Lane and Wellness Way, opening by November 2024 in the Las Vegas Medical District. The Medical District is technically it's in Ward 1, mm -hmm. but it's near the downtown. Of course, you also represent the downtown. So yeah. this is going to be a game changer for that whole area. It is, and it's great. We are literally building out a, a world-class health district. Mm -hmm. How, imagine that in a city of, of our age, our size, exactly. still creating this. Mm -hmm. uh, the beauty of it is that when I was on the Board of Regents, I, I worked to bring the medical school to bifurcate University of Nevada Medical School UNLV Medicine to mm -hmm. create University Medicine School. Uh, I believe that once we did that, it would create more um, uh, direct attention for the healthcare disparities right. in Southern Nevada, and it's done just that. Uh, we're in the process of building a medical building, school building. Yeah. This is Under happening. Yeah. And so the entire landscape of what the health district is gonna look like, Valley Hospital, UMC, the Skills Lab, the Dental School, um, UNLV Medicine Practice Plan, and others, right in that area is gonna be tremendously different in the next five years. Yeah, it, it really is. The impact we'll make, we won't really know for yeah. five, 10 years from now because many ancillary med medical uh, companies that are taking place, the research that's taking place at UNLV Medicine um, will bring a lot more attention to yep. disparities that are taking place, uh, the indigent care that the University UNLV Medicine is uh, going out in the community, helping. We're talking to them about some other things we have in the with the Hunter Plan in Action about yep. a wellness center in um, in the historic West Side. It it has so many tentacles surrounded around one area and really the impetus from UNLV Medicine that's there. And it's just great. And I have to tell uh, everybody about, you know, Councilman Knudsen, I think, is his ward, but he's done an amazing job of bringing the partners together in order to create a unified vision of where we're going yep. with, with the health district. Yep. And it needs that. And it takes strong leadership in order to, to, to create that, to bring unity, because everybody's not always on the same yep. page. You got to get everybody on the same page and you have to push forward and moving forward. So I, I give him a lot of kudos for that. Very, very well planned. Very, mm -hmm. very well organized for sure. And then Councilman, I uh, want to tell everybody about the American Rescue Plan. City Council here at the February 16th meeting allocated $121 million yeah. to a variety of programs here in Southern Nevada uh, that uh, to help organizations uh, survive the pandemic and, and to move on from the pandemic. And the focus was on affordable housing, nonprofit organizations, business assistance, and then pandemic response. What we mean by that is expenses that came along unexpectedly because of the pandemic that uh, government, uh, other organizations had to, had to contend with that they weren't planning for. So. Yeah, you know, it's amazing that we had $2 billion worth of requests yeah. for $121 yeah. million dollars worth of resources over a two year period. Our team did a fantastic job of narrowing down those requests. Many of the larger nonprofits received dollars. Uh, UNLV Medicine received money as one of the Blind Center yep. received dollars um, and others. But we also wanted to make sure that many yep. of the smaller nonprofits that don't have a huge um, uh, department of people writing grants that don't have the, a, a huge uh, philanthropic arm of their mm -hmm. nonprofit received dollars as well. And smaller organizations, Just One Project, Cardi Dodd downtown, uh, mm -hmm. TPL Foundation, and others received dollars as well. Uh, Chef Jeff Project. Those are really, for lack of better terms, mom and pop organizations that are doing amazing things mm -hmm. in the community. And sometimes the big ones get all the resources and the small ones get left by the wayside. Well, we wanted to do everything we yeah. could to ensure that the smaller ones had opportunities as well. And then that's gonna help them build capacity yep. to allow them to help more people. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, that money is getting pushed out right now. And then uh, Councilman, I want to tell everybody too, uh, great new addition, uh, the Audrey Nelson Community Development uh, Recuperative Care Center. Yeah. Tell everyone about this. Well, this is, really special to me because of the fact that when I first got in office, many have heard me say I traveled around the country with our team 
looking at homelessness and redevelopment of underserved communities. And one of the things that we saw in Phoenix was called a respite center, which mm -hmm. is a recuperative care facility. When uh, homeless individuals are hurt or sick and have physical ailments, they go to the emergency room. The emergency rooms are trying to get them out of those uh, emergency rooms because it gets crowded. Mm -hmm. They're sending them down to our courtyard, but they still have physical ailments. This recuperative care center provides them an opportunity to see physicians and nurses uh, to receive that physical care as well as a place to sleep as well as to receive yeah. workforce development, mental health care if they need it, and resources. The goal is for them to leave that facility physically well as well as in a position to go into some transitional housing and long-term housing. Exactly. It's going to help them get back on their feet. Yeah, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great, great addition yeah. to the community. Yeah, and so Much for them needed. to receive their award, and, it, and it's only been open I, two years maybe yeah, yeah. Uh, if Look, that the first year was a trial mm -hmm. remember it was it was a mm -hmm. trial that the city did uh, and uh, it was overwhelmingly successful mm -hmm. and so here we are with it and it's just fantastic and so, I have to give once again a lot of credit to you know the mayor support our uh, city manager support community services for making this happen yeah. very quickly did they make it happen as well exactly. very swiftly and the timing uh, with the pandemic couldn't have been yeah. more critical so amazing Love this too. You posted this on Facebook. Congratulations to the first annual eSports tournament winners. Yeah. Playing some Madden over at the Cox facility, on right? Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this, our, our Strong Free Technology Center is another aspect of something that was not here that's here. That's training our youth in the STEM fields, as well as our seniors in the STEM fields. And we're hosting these eSports tournaments. Uh, this is the first year over Super Bowl weekend. We, 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 had, we had a Madden tournament, <laughs> yeah. and it was great to see the kids out. My goodness, these kids are so engaged. You, you think they were playing a real Super Bowl. I know, I know. And uh, they were going back and forth. It was wonderful to see. We had two winners. Uh, it was fantastic. We had vendors out, mm -hmm. a lot of fun. It was just great to see over the historic West Of course, the idea of the, the, of the center is to uh, enhance uh, young people's no love of technology yes, and, and yes, science. Yes, yes, exactly. yes. And it meets them where they are. Exactly. We are in a technological age. Uh, we're sort of behind the yes, eight ball. We are. And we have to get our kids ready for those jobs of the future and those entry level, high paying entry level jobs that are going to provide for their families uh, strong benefits. I always say you give a person a good job, it changes their life, their family's life, and the community's lives. Okay. And that's exactly what we're doing. Thanks again to Cox Communications okay. for the Cox Innovation Center that's there. And it just adds to everything we're doing with our 100 plan in action. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the world is changing, that yes. is for sure. Yes. And last but not least, Council, want to mention this is, an, I know, near and dear to you in the ward. The Mom Museum turned 10 years old. How about celebrated that? Celebrated its 10th anniversary. You know, I always say that when Mayor Oscar Goodman came out with uh, the Mob Museum, I was not in public service and uh, I was on, on, on the Board of Regents, by the City Council, and I was saying, like other residents, like, what? A Mob Museum? What's that all about? Didn't know, I knew they had the spy museum in DC, uh, but I tell you uh, what a visionary that was created with this museum. It's one of the most successful museums in the country. It's accredited. Uh, it gets thousands and thousands of visitors annually. And, and three million visitors. Three million yeah, visitors yeah, yeah, so yeah, far. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I tell you, if you haven't gone to see it, I urge you to go see it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Right there on Stewart uh, near Fourth uh, Street. Yeah, uh, so yeah. You, check and, it out. you know, and it, look, it, it has mob museum, but it's not really. It's more than that. It's about uh, criminal it's, crime, the FBI. Yeah. Uh, How they tells, brought down the yeah, the, the and it tells crime, yeah. it tells a lot of stories that you know you can listen to wiretaps that were there. Uh, it's, it's very it's yeah, very hands on. Yeah, that. take yeah. an afternoon, take a day, and go down to the mob museum. All right. Councilman, we're just about out of time here. I want to tell everybody out there, hey, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilman Curry, you can find him on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram for that matter. You can also contact him by picking up the phone, 702-229-6405, or send him an email. His address is ccreer at lasvegasnevada.gov. And here, one of his great staff, get right back to you. Councilman, great job. We'll have you, you back in uh, six weeks with another weeks. update from Ward 5. Uh, you're busy. I can hardly wait to see what we're going to talk about. It comes so quick. It does. It does. <laughs> we'll Thank see you, you then. All, all right. right, my friend. Uh, you can catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Now, also look for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to sign up for our newsletter. Don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time around.